Good evening and welcome to Millennium Stage. And now I'd like to please welcome to the stage bass clarinetist and jazz composer Todd Marcus, along with uh, Kevin Clark, Bruce Barth, Amin Salim, and Eric Kennedy. Thank you very much, everyone. Good to be here with you. Good to be back at the Kennedy Center. Normally, we just come on the stage and we start playing. We play hard. We have a good time. But tonight, we are celebrating my new CD, which is called On These Streets, and it bears some contextualization. Uh, I've lived the last 20-plus years in Baltimore, Maryland, in a neighborhood that I moved into um, when I first came to the city as a college student and started um, getting no folks in the neighborhood. Most people know our neighborhood because they know one of our residents that died in 2015, Freddie Gray. And Freddie Gray lived, uh, uh, I lived two blocks away, and um, as we had so much negative news attention focusing on our neighborhood, uh, it really had me th realizing that as a 20 plus year resident, I had a chance to give a musical portrait of our community, not just our challenges, but our strengths as well. And so this new record tries to to portray that. And on the record, there are these audio interludes of different voices of community leaders and neighbors of mine and friends of mine. And so we're gonna thread that all into our performance tonight. And so you'll hear that in between different uh, pieces of music that give you a little setup. So with that, we're gonna start. This is an introduction to our first song called An Intersection of Change, which is a community nonprofit that in the other half of my life, I, I have been a part of where we are dealing with poverty related challenges in our community and you're gonna hear from one of the most important people that I met when I moved in the neighborhood, Elder C.W. Harris, a lifelong resident that stayed in the community when so many others left over the years. So we hope you enjoy our, our music and learn about our community and thank you for being here with us tonight. Behind me is the uh, 1300 block of Stockton Street and that's uh, where I was raised back in the day. A little bit different than you grew up there. A whole lot different. We would have picnics at the square up here many years ago course, you're seeing a lot of vacancy around here. Uh, this community had a population of uh, 40,000 when I was growing up, and that was in the 50s. And it's now down to 10,000. We serve here because there's so much suffering in this community, because there's so much need here in this community. Our community having uh, kids not graduating from school, uh, selling drugs, people in the community decent, affordable homes, uh, returning citizens from incarceration, going back to jail. Things had to be done, and so uh, we had to put action to the words that we preached. And so our outward journey allowed us to start programs such as Martha's Place, which supports women who are suffering with their addiction with drugs and alcohol, Jubilee Arts, which supports our young people and old so that they may express themselves artistically. Also, Strength of Love, too, which supports returning citizens from incarceration. And these programs are what help us in poverty in the communities of Sandtown and Chester. There's much joy in that, much hope that we ourselves are the ones who bring the change. And so I'm at the place where I feel that uh, Jesus would be if he was alive. He is alive, but he is alive in me. And that's why we serve here.
I can go back to, I'll say my teenage years, and Pennsylvania Avenue was the mecca. It was the hub for all of our African-American singers and dancers and jazz musicians. Pennsylvania Avenue was a part of the Chitlin circuit. Uh, entertainers would uh, go to a part at the Howard Theater in uh, Washington, D.C. They would come here to the Rural Theater in Baltimore, Maryland, and they would go to the Apollo in New York. And uh, those um, uh, places of entertainment were called the Chitlin Circuit. And all the African-American talent in the United States would be a part of that circuit. Everybody from everywhere would come, and the Royal would be packed. That was the place. The avenue was the place to be. There were lights. There were stores. There were people stopping, talking, and mingling with one another. There was love. You know, there were clubs all up and down here. I used to go to see all the shows at the Royal. Duke Ellington and Count Basie and Fletcher Henderson. Cab Calloway, bands playing everywhere, musicians that didn't have to worry about work, plenty of work. After the riots, everything began to go down. What was lively now was dead, and it was hurtful because the place where people had a place to go, now there wasn't.
Thank you, everyone. That was called Pennsylvania Avenue Hustle, and you heard the talk about the, the heyday of Pennsylvania Avenue in our neighborhood. Um, our next composition is called PTSD in the Hood, and it came about because I had heard or I had read about a study years ago um, that was focused on how communities that live with poverty uh, conditions where residents exhibit PTSD post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms. And um, when we had the unrest in 2015, it was around the time that I had just released an album uh, with my nine-piece group. And it was doing well, and we had a, a radio station in Hawaii that had said, we, we would like you to um, record a little bit of you saying, you're listening to WABC in Hawaii, aloha. And uh, I thought, oh, cool, this is great. And, uh, and so, this was a couple days after the unrest, and I couldn't get through that little 10-second blurb because the helicopters were swirling around. And the first time, I said, okay, I'll hit pause and try it again. And after doing that several times, I, I reali realized just I started snapping. And it had me thinking about that study that I had, I had writ, uh, read years ago. And uh, for me, you know, 20-plus years in the neighborhood, seeing ways that um, – that, that it's uh, kind of impacted me, at, but for my neighbors that have their whole lives been in our neighborhood dealing with uh, the challenges we have, whether it's um, the poor education, the poor housing stock we have, the lack of uh, good employment, uh, police practicing, all these challenges that face residents in our neighborhood. So we try to have that come across with an intensity, with uh, a brooding quality, um, and with a frenetic kind of pace that you hear in this composition, PTSD in the hood. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to be. Savior, I 
Thank you, everyone. That's Mr. Eric Kennedy on drums and vocals. Eric Kennedy <laughs> on guitar. Kevin Clark. Kevin Clark on guitar. <laughs> Miss Amin Salim on the bass. Amin Salim. <laughs> Bruce Barth on the piano. Mr. Bruce Barth. <laughs> we love playing this music, and, and you can see the different moods, and as I said earlier, how it shares our strengths our challenges, all of them together, and how there's that, that duality in, uh, in our community and certainly in music. And um, that last piece was one that reflects how uh, church has long been a, a, a force in our community, certainly um, very prominent in the civil rights movement. And, uh, and today still, um, you know, I got a church behind my house and one around the corner and uh, came up in church as well. And so that's just so so central to our, our community and one of its beauties. And you hear just uh, how Eric Kennedy uh, treats that. Our, our treatment of it is a very traditional hymn and then we, we open it up and let it flourish. We're gonna go to um, some of the more conflicted material again for a moment now. And um, when Freddie Gray died in 2015 and then we had the, uh, the unrest, a lot of it was centered at one intersection in our neighborhood. For those that watched on the news, they saw a, a CVS that was uh, looted and set on fire and that became kind of the media focal point and also a gathering point in the days after uh, for the protests and demonstrations. And um, the night of the unrest, there were a lot of folks out and, um, and a lot of media were, um, were talking to some of our different representatives. And so in this next introduction track, you're gonna hear one of our city councilmen, Nick Mosby, um, being uh, spoken to by a very kind of adversarial reporter and, um, and the eloquence that he contextualizes the challenges of what was taking place that night, but with an understanding of why our community faces so many of the challenges that it does. And this composition will try to uh, similarly portray that kind of conflicted duality as well. This is Ground Zero at Penn and North. It's interesting, Steve. If you come over here, there are a couple of gentlemen in suits that may be worth us talking to. We're going to cross the street here and talk to this gentleman. Hi, how you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I'm reporting here. Are you from Baltimore? We are. I'm a city councilman in the district. You're a city councilman here. You're watching this. Tell me what this means for your city. When you're watching this go on, does it break your heart to see this happen? Oh, definitely. I mean, what it is is, I mean, these, these young boys, the young folks in this community showing decades old of anger and frustration for a system that's failed them. I mean, it's bigger than Freddie Gray. This is about social economics and poor urban America. And these young guys are frustrated and upset, and unfortunately, they're displaying it in a very destructive manner. You know, when folks are undereducated, unfortunately, they don't have the same intellectual voice to express it the way that other people are doing it. That's exactly what we're seeing with the violence thing. We just watched this liquor store being looted, and there's a bunch of folks running in and out of there. What's wrong with them? The police are all the way down there. You're a city councilman, is that right? Is it right for people to loot? No. I mean, I think you've missed, like, everything I've tried to articulate. Okay, all right. How many understand? What I said is everything out here has happened is wrong. The violence is wrong. It's not acceptable. Understanding that it's a symptom of something going on here, and what I'm trying to articulate to you is we look at communities like this in urban America, and we see lack of education, we see lack of commercial development, lack of opportunities. It's the social economics of it. It has nothing to do with this corner or, or West Baltimore. This could occur anywhere in socially, economically deprived America. <laughs>
Thank you. 
Thank you so much, everyone. We've got uh, time for one more. And this is the, the composition that closes the album. It's called New Jersey 88, Ode to the 80s. And uh, we hope you enjoy the music. We hope you enjoy this portrait of, of my neighborhood in Baltimore. Thank you so much, everyone. If you would like to learn more about uh, my music work, uh, the website is toddmarcusjazz.com. If you would like to learn more about what we're doing in our neighborhood in West Baltimore, please visit the website for our nonprofit, Intersection of Change, and that is intersectionofchange.org. And, you know, if you want to take some of this music home with you, this doesn't have to end now. Our relationship does not have to end now. Uh, we have CDs. Um, uh, Patty Prasada Rao, who is wearing a, a, a blue uh, dress, you can see her. And uh, we have CDs. We have download cards. You know, I found out that a lot of people now don't have CD players anymore. So uh, we got download cards. But we don't want you leaving a free performance without spending a little money to support the arts. So please uh, go and see her for that. And thank you for being with us. If you really feel like you're transformed by this music and want to be a groupie, we'll be up in Newark, New Jersey tomorrow. So come up and see us there. We'll be in Eastern Maryland on Saturday at the Avalon, and then Sunday we wrap up in Baltimore at the Creative Alliance. Uh, special thanks to everybody at the Kennedy Center, folks that are working the room, working the cameras, working the sound. They booked us to come here. They promoted it. It's a big operation. It's a wonderful gem that we have here in our capital. Thank you all at Kennedy Center, and thank you all for us uh, for you being here with us. Thank you.
Bruce Barth on the piano, Bruce Barth. Kevin Clark on guitar, Kevin Clark. Amin Salim on the bass, Amin Salim. Eric Kennedy on drums and vocals, Eric Kennedy. Thank you so much, Kenny Center. My name is Todd Marcus on bass clarinet. Thank you.